Hi guys and welcome to that time of the day again where we load up another maths video. Ah, oh, transposing equations, could it get any more exciting than this? Yes, probably if you're playing Fortnite. No, don't talk about Fortnite, that was so yesterday. I was going to actually record a video of me playing Fortnite. It is a joy to behold and somewhat terrifying because I've got no idea what I'm doing. I run around and get shot a lot, which I think is a little mean. Um, but that's our, our whole new discussion and apparently yesterday I, I'll look forward to hearing what the game of choice is. In fact, do you know what the current game is? Let me know by leaving a comment below. Um, if you've just joined my channel and have no idea what I'm talking about, well, my name's Darren, I'm Maths Guru. Very pleased to meet you. Um, you can do me a favour. Uh, this is weird because you haven't really judged. You're, you're sort of judging me and thinking I'm a bit of a, a, lo a loser, probably. Ha! Uh, there's a subscribe button over there if you could click it. Um, it'd be great to know that you're actually watching and that I'm actually doing this for um, a, a reason um, that you know hopefully is helping you. Um, this lesson is a continuation of the Methods 1 and 2 course over here in Australia. Now, if you're watching and go, well, I'm not in Australia, I don't need to watch it. Trust me, math is universal. It doesn't matter what course you're following. Transposing equations, moving things around is, is part of maths and has been since about year 8. So, um, yeah, it, it's good to see you. Stick with me. Uh, hopefully you'll learn something. Now, as I say above, uh, what is the learning today? Well, basically, you know what it means to transpose an equation and how to transpose equations. You've been doing this for years, literally years. Um, and interesting, lots of people go, I find this really hard. And I, it, it's probably because with um, algebra, there are a couple of rules that just trick people. One of the big ones is fractions. People hate fractions. Put your hand up if you hate fractions. Comment below if you hate fractions. I'll put my hand up, I don't like fractions. But I've come up with strategies to be able to make uh, fractions easier, to turn them from ugly fractions into much nicer lines of working out that I can go, and go on and use basic fractions and sort of multiplying out. Now, the great thing is that we've already done some of this previously in terms of solving literal equations. And when I said there's a video showing above, now above, somewhere above, don't they? When I say about solving literal equations, um, all we were doing was just changing them around and getting X or a letter on its own, a polynomial on its own. And that's actually what transposing formulas is. It's just making a letter sit on its own, a different letter than is currently there. Normally we have like, if for example, we had the equation Y equals MX plus C. Well, at the moment, Y is the subject of the formula. If I wanted to make C the subject of the formula, it's just asking me to rearrange it so that I get C equals. So that's pretty much it. Now, again, I've got here algebra, algebra, and more algebra. Now, this whole course, I'm really sorry to say, is algebra. Nothing more, nothing less. The basic, com uh, the basic concepts for the rest of the course aren't particularly challenging, I promise you. So for example, I've got one here. And um, we do a subject much, much later in the year called differentiation. And um, when we differentiate something, we have a, a function, we have a graph that might be y equals x cubed. And when we differentiate it, we just simply write y dashed, is equal to, we bring the floaty number down, and then we take one off the floaty number. Literally it. So if I had y was equal to x to the power of 5, then y dashed is equal to 5x to the power of 4. See what I did? I took the floaty number, moved it down, and subtracted 1 from the floaty number. Difficult? Not at all. Algebra? Absolutely. The problem with differentiation is being able to do that is one thing, but understanding why you're doing it is another thing. Because hopefully you're sitting there going and going, well, why did you put a dashed? And why, why would you take one off? Well, obviously there's some background to this, which we can show using algebra. But that basic concept is like three chapters of the textbook. But let's go back to transposing formula because practicing is gonna make perfect. And, and I promise you the best way to do this is to practice. Now, there's actually a lot of mathematics in real life. We tend not to tell that to you because we are much happier as math teachers letting you believe that math is completely pointless and that we're making you sit in the classroom and do this for no real fun or pleasure, just get to university. Sound right? Yeah. Well, wouldn't it be weird if we went to a soccer match or an AFL match and every three seconds someone beside you went, oh my goodness, did you see the maths in that? Did you see the maths? It was fabulous. Did you see, oh yes, that was a parabola. Did you see the parabola? You get a bit bored, you probably punch him in the head repeatedly, which there's no violence at the MCG, so please don't do violence. Actually, one of the great things about living in Australia and going to AFL matches is totally different from UK. Now, sorry, yes, British as well, soccer, not a great lover. Particularly when you go to matches, while there's that whole in the matches, uh, AFL's actually much, much better. So, big tick for uh, AFL over here in Australia. But the point of it is there's a lot of... Um, 
maths in soccer and, and tennis and anything with uh, some sort of a ball. Uh, and these equations here, of which there are actually five of them, but four of the main equations, are the equations of constant acceleration. And that's basically you describing a parabola. It's describing the path of a ball when we kick it or a tennis ball when we hit it or whatever. Many cases, you'll notice that this first formula is V is equal to U plus AT. Well, at the moment, V is the subject of the formula. What if I wanted to make T the subject of the formula? What about with S equals UT plus a half AT squared? What if I wanted to make A the subject of the formula? Really, all it means is let's get A on its own. Let's move everything else away and get A on its own. Now, the big trick to uh, this is making sure that anything's connected to the letter is always moved last. More of that on a moment. And finally, there is uh, another formula, which again, a lot of this is physics um, or science. This is t equals 2 pi, uh, the square root of L over g. That's to find the time it takes for a pendulum to do one period or one swing. So when you have a pendulum or, you know, like the old grandfather clocks where they go tick, in my head at this moment uh, in time I've got Cogsworth from Beauty and the Beast because he was a clock with a, it was a pendulum clock uh, if I can I'm probably putting stuff behind me now if I can find anything on Cogsworth I think Disney's awesome I can find everything Mass Disney anyway so let's get into the actual mass behind this because it's six minutes and I haven't actually shown you any real mass that's not true I showed you how to differentiate so we have V equals U plus AT and it says make T the subject of the formula so first things first, anything that's stuck to T, I'm going to leave. I'm going to get rid of this U. How to get rid of a U? I'm going to take away U from both sides. So like a number, if that was a 2, I would subtract 2. Now I'm just going to take away U from both sides. So V minus U is equal to AT. Done everything else I can now. The only thing that's left is what I call the kissing couple. And they're kissing because there's a times in between them. How do I want uh, to get rid of that A? Well, it's a times by A. So I'm going to divide both sides by A. So I get V minus U all divided by A is equal to T. And we wouldn't normally write it that way because we want the T on its own. And it's sort of uh, standard notation to put the letter on its own is V minus U on A. Now, again, you're probably sitting there going, well, that was fairly obvious. I agree. If you knew how to do this, my apologies. But notation's important. If you had written this V minus U divided by A equals T, you're wrong. Because in that situation, that notation tells me the only thing you're actually dividing by A is U. If you put it in brackets, yep, happier. Doesn't look particularly nice. Not exactly what we're expecting. But likewise, lots of people do this. They only divide the U, or they'll only divide the V, or their divide sign won't go under everything and it will look. So one of the things about methods is to make sure that your notation is perfect because in an exam we actually have to knock you down for poor notation much more on that in a different video example two we've got v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as and what does it want it wants to make u the subject of the formula right well there's nothing really stuck to the u other than that squared sign so what am i going to do i'm going to have to move the plus 2as well they're all times together so i can move them all together and i'm going to subtract 2as from both sides so we get v squared minus 2as is equal to u squared. How do I undo a square? A square root. So I now get the square root of v squared minus 2as is equal to u. But word of warning, you have to put the positive and negative because remember, when you square root something, there can be a positive solution and there can be a negative solution. It's important to write that or unfortunately the answer is wrong. So writing this again becomes the square root v squared minus 2as with a plus or minus in front of it and there we go just all i'm doing is just moving things over make a the subject of the formula for that right okay so i've got s is equal to ut plus a half a t squared now on a right i've got a half and a t squared uh, t squared stuck together i'm going to leave it i'm going to move my ut first i'm going to subtract ut from both sides so s minus ut is equal to a half a t squared. Right, what's the next step? Well, the next step for me would be get rid of that half. How do you get rid of a half? You double absolutely everything. A half is just divide by two. So how do I do a divide by two? I double. I double absolutely everything. So the two 
multiply the s becomes 2s minus 2 ut is equal to a t squared. Now, there are people screaming at the screen now going, but you could have done that easier. Yes, I could have done two lots of s minus ut in brackets. The good news is mine is still right. Yours is right. They're all right. But maybe in an exam, we'd be looking at writing it in a specific form. We'll come back to that in a moment. So I've got my a t squared. All right, so what do I do now? Well, the a and the t squared are the kissing couple. Leave the a on its own want to get rid of the t squared, which is connected by a times. So I'm now going to do 2s minus 2ut, all divided by t squared, is equal to a. Now, writing that in a more mathematically acceptable way, a is equal to 2s minus 2ut, all over t squared. Now, I'll agree with you. It's at this moment that if you can factorize the top, you advise to factorize. Again, just a notational thing. So a becomes equal to 2, which is s minus ut, at close bracket, all over t squared. And there we go. Now, a word of warning, ladies and gentlemen, the number of people who then do, who will go from this and go, OK, so a is equal to 2s minus 2. I'm just going to write it out again and show you what people do. And they go, oh, OK, I can get rid of a t there and a t there. No, you really can't. Uh, you can only cancel uh, when there are t's in both. So please, please, please don't do that. When there's a t, sorry, in every single term, please don't do that. Lastly, make g the subject, or second from last, make g the subject of the formula there. Again, we've got a square root sign. All we've got to do is make sure that we unpack things in the right way. L on g. So that's supposed to be a pi. First things first, what am I going to do? I'm going to get rid of the 2 pi. It's stuck to the square root sign. I can't get rid of that g at the moment because it's protected by the square root sign. Get everything that's stuck to the square root sign first. So I'm going to divide both sides by 2 pi. So t on 2 pi is the square root of l on g. All right, I've got to get rid of the g now. So how do I get rid of a square root? I square absolutely everything. So that becomes t on 2 pi all squared is l on g. Right, I'm going to square things out because we know how to square things out. So that's going to give me t squared on 4 pi squared. Remember, 2 times 2 is 4, and pi times pi is pi squared is l on g. Now, I want to get g on its own. And again, another shortcut, another trick I've learned is when you have a fraction equals a fraction, you can swap corners. <laughs> So I'm going to change that g with that t squared. And it only works if I've got one fraction that equals a fraction. If I had a plus 2 or something else on it, that doesn't work. So I now get g on 4 pi squared is equal to l on t squared. And so I now need to get rid of my divide by 4 pi squared. I want that g on its own. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 4 pi squared, which gives me 4 pi squared l on t squared. And ladies and gentlemen, I have just transposed my formula. We can, good news, use my CAS to be able to do this. So loading up my CAS calculator. Here we go. I'm going to hit main and was usual. The great thing about the CAS is, is this solve function. So I'm going to hit solve. I'm going to put in my equation. So I'm going to do v and I'm going to do squared equals, where's my equal sign? Equals u squared plus 2 and I'm going to put the times and the a and the times and the s and I'm going to put a comma and I want to now the question of the thing is basically saying well what do you want and I want to make you the subject so I'm going to put you here now notice those times is the calculator isn't as clever as you think sometimes it knows what a times means and sometimes it doesn't or, or a string of letters and numbers together so 2as it's not going to understand means 2 times a times s so putting that in press enter and lo and behold <clears throat> you've come up with two values now looking at that it's, it looks weird doesn't it but all it's got is my plus and my minus value and it's got that u is equal to the negative of v squared minus 2as or u is equal to the positive of v squared minus 2as and life is good well, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for this lesson. What did we do? We did transposing formulas, which is part of the reviewing linear equations chapter. It is, as ever, really good seeing you. Can you do me a favor and hit that circle if you haven't already subscribed? You may have been testing me out, seeing if it's worth it. I promise you it will be. And let your friends know. Otherwise, there's a video over there loading. It has been good seeing you. Thank you very much for taking the time and dropping by. I'll see you next time. Maskuru, out.